Hello, Calista Redmond here from uh, Risk Five. Happy to field any questions on the uh, Risk Five revolution. We are absolutely seeing a continued ongoing growth and uh, building momentum around the world. Uh, would love to share any details on uh, Risk Five that are of interest to the community, or in uh, how to navigate open source as a community or as a corporation. Ah, okay. I think I'm able to see the questions now. Apologies for a little bit of that delay. Uh, we have absolutely seen a lot of great uh, excitement around automotive in particular. And uh, let's see, now I can't see that question anymore. Uh, in particular, we have a safety committee that has spun up. We are continuing to see uh, growth around interest in joining that committee. We have uh, seen public uh, news releases uh, using uh, NVIDIA with uh, uh, RISC V around automotive um, at the software level. You know, the safety and, and critical features in automotive have been paramount in our RISC V community. Let's see what we have going on in the chat here. Uh, so I got, uh, I think, that one. And then how long do you think it will be until we have a desktop machine running RISC-V? Almost a trick question. So uh, Sci-5 has recently announced that they are able to do RISC-V in a PC-based SOC. And that uh, is something that has uh, already hit the news. You know, RISC-V has uh, had, start, had its start in Embedded. And it looks like we are growing very quickly uh, from embedded to enterprise and everything in between. So uh, not just desktops and other uh, devices that uh, could go either as a plug in the wall or on battery operation, but uh, also in data centers and everything in between. You know, you've got uh, Alibaba in China that has deployed RISC-V uh, using uh, the RISC-V features specifically for AI. Uh, we see that as a common theme with multinationals who are looking at risk five to really build on uh, kind of the new workloads and new opportunities, more so than say replacing legacy architectures. Uh, you also see uh, risk five growing in HPC. So HPC is something that has been very important uh, across many industries and has also uh, seen the need for acceleration and, and AI capabilities. Uh, and we see that uh, most prominently in Europe uh, with the uh, uh, European Processor Initiatives uh, designating RISC-V as, as a part of that uh, group. Keeping up with the questions here. Wow, guys, you guys are firing away, which is fantastic. Uh, so then why would one use RISC-V? What are the main advantages? So you know, RISC-V from a technical level has a lot of benefits. It is a modular ISA, meaning that you start with one small base building block, 47 instructions, in fact, uh, very lightweight. Rather than starting with a legacy architecture or a legacy ISA that has been more incrementally built and has grown over time. Uh, one popular ISA is 1,500 instructions. That's a lot to go through. And you know, when you think about the number of instructions that you are required to use or that you need to be, be compliant to, transparency is key. And that transparency allows you to see everything going on, uh, which is a critical aspect for security. So there, you, know, you can see everything. There are no back doors. Uh, you don't have the same risks as others have had 
around uh, some of those malicious attacks or other uh, aspects around security. So it is seen as a prominent feature of RISC V. And again, that modular approach means that you can add on the extensions that are critical for your workload. Now that's the technical side. On the business side of things, uh, it's free and open. You, there are no license, license fees, no royalty fees. In fact, that expands your opportunity to work with other innovation partners, uh, to expand your supply chain options, to really grow globally. Uh, you don't have the barriers of uh, and constraints that come with a uh, pay to play licensing model or royalty model. So that uh, business opportunity expands not only in kind of the partners you can bring on to build your product, but also the market opportunity and where you can take your product. Uh, so as those things expand, so does your market opportunity, allowing uh, our innovators to go into adjacent spaces, to team with others who can leverage some of the innovations that they've done together. Let's see what else we have here. Can you talk in general about the latest developments with Silicon implementing RISC-V? What is the most advanced process technology that RISC-V core is being targeted for? I think I've addressed that a little bit in the different workload types. Uh, you know, the, it, the explosion and opportunity is really around those new workloads. Uh, we've, you know, kind of settled into some legacy models for uh, some of the existing workloads, but the explosion and opportunity is tremendous. Uh, we see uh, more than 60 billion cores coming to market in on risk five uh, by 2025. We see global interest in that, uh, whether those are folks who are looking for new innovation options or to take down barriers on the business or political landscape. Uh, we see a lot of interest. Uh, we, today we have about a third of our membership in North America, about a third in Europe, and about a third in APAC. Uh, so that uh, collaboration opportunity has expanded tremendously as has the market opportunity. Uh, the major biggest roadblocks or major problem between different risk five implementations, different ISAs and verification. So, you know, the roadblocks have uh, primarily been around, um, you know, kind of how mature is the technology. And, you know, those legacy architectures have been around for decades. Well, the good news is risk architectures generally have also been around for decades. So you're not fundamentally learning a new ISA, but we are continuing to work and grow the ecosystem of, of uh, innovations that surround the ISA. So those might be extensions, those might be tools and design resources. And those are growing very rapidly. In fact, this is the fastest growth open hardware play that this that the industry has ever seen. And it is about time. You know, if you look back on the 80s when there was the processor battle, uh, and that settled out to a few uh, kind of large players, right? And now we're seeing the growth uh, fundamentally at all levels, whether they are multinationals putting a toe in the water with microcontrollers or entrepreneurs building brand new businesses with a slew of investors around the risk five architecture. So it really is an opportunity for growth in all levels, uh, but it does take time. We are not as old as those legacy architectures that have been building their ecosystems for as many decades as they've been around. But we do have an incredible community that's growing very rapidly. In fact, we've achieved more than 50% growth in our membership just since the beginning of 2020. That is in an era of, uh, you know, all the struggles and challenges that our world has faced. But with challenge comes the opportunity for disruption. And that's what we're seeing in the Risk 5 community. So why is Risk 5 ISA better than other open ISAs? So that's sort of a, a question around other open ISA models. In fact, if you go to Mark Himmelstein's uh, kind of uh, talk on risk five from a technical view, he gives a great uh, kind of synopsis of where other open ISAs have come from. And I'll, I'll sort of, you know, encourage you to go see that talk, but I will also tell you at its core, risk five was developed from the start as an open ISA. It came out of Berkeley with no commercial interest in it whatsoever with the mandate that it be open and freely available to all from the start. It, has, it was not grown inside a corporation with a you know, very clear vested interest in its success, but it has been grown by a community, much more akin to how Linux was grown. Linux was contributed 
very early on with the intent of being an open uh, an open uh, software, and that is also true of Risk Five. So that fundamental start means that it is an entire community that is invested in its success. Similar to Raspberry Pi, are there some good evaluation kits or boards with real uh, to build real projects with? Absolutely. In fact, if you go to our website riscv.org, risk5.org. Uh, you will see something called Exchange. In Exchange, we have uh, many different developer boards that have come together. Uh, we have boards with uh, Spark Fun, uh, boards that many of our members have collaborated together on. Uh, you see boards from Microchip. Uh, so many different developer kits are available. In addition, on our website, you'll also find open cores, proprietary cores, SOCs, and many other uh, tools, design tools, software, what software runs on RISC-V. We list it all there, and there are hundreds of available resources uh, in that exchange area. And we're always looking for more. If you know of one that hasn't been listed yet, please let us know. We're trying to keep up with the rapid growth in our, in our community. Uh, from Ian, what with the current climate, can you still cooperate with Chinese companies? Huawei did some great work with ARM CPUs, but it seems like they can't continue along that track. I know it's political, but their work group could do a great job. <laughs> uh, Ian, thanks for the question. You know, uh, open source has long been held as a uh, you know a, a technology that is owned by the community, and our community is truly global. We don't have roadblocks up when something is uh, contributed to open source. That is true of all open source. So from a, a technical or political or licensing perspective, there are no hurdles like that. In fact, Huawei has been a great participant and leader in the RISC-V community, and they are continuing to do so today. In fact, that is true of many uh, of our members who are coming from China. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Alibaba has been another leader in our community. Uh, we also uh, work closely with Rios. Rios is a uh, development institute that is uh, centered in both Berkeley and Tsinghua University in uh, Shenzhen. And so, you know, we, we see a, a diversity of interest from both research and academia and industry and venture capital going on around the world, and that is including China. Uh, so that in the current climate, we absolutely are cooperating and working together. Uh, you know, one of our, our key things around open source is to work with transparency. So our member work groups have absolute transparency uh, broadly and publicly about our activities. And is, as is common in most open source communities, we're not there to share technical, uh, confidential technical information. So we are very clear in our uh, rules of the road, rules of engagement that are, uh, we are not there to uh, share uh, confidential information that would otherwise be subject to uh, export control or, or any other regulations from different countries. What is the roadmap for compliance, the point where RISC-V International would start certifying implementations? We are on that roadmap now. Uh, about a year ago in, uh, well, close to a year ago, it, it will be in, in December, we released our first test suite and we have continued to cultivate and grow and build tests since then. We have members who are offering compliance uh, uh, test suites as well as and working with many of the uh, usual silicon tool providers uh, and design shops. Uh, so we are uh, working towards a compliance uh, certification uh, and we're probably going to call it compatibility uh, because ISAs uh, is just one building block of an entire set of uh, things. And we will build on that to establish different profiles and different other types of stacks that would be useful uh, to our community. Most of the licensing costs and proprietary lock-in on SOCs is not related to the ISA, but the peripherals and accelerators around the CPU. Does RISC-V have a plan to address this? Yeah, you know, actually I, I kind of just, um, sneak peek that one uh you know as we build out profiles and different implementation you know key implementation styles uh that is where you're going to see those types of uh compliance that we would um you know adhere to but we are not uh at the soc level we are building uh, we are composing building blocks so that any implementer can pull those together and still be compliant to that base isa and that is fundamentally the most important 
Uh, so at, whether it's a microcontroller or a full SOC, uh, those are things that we're working toward. There are many extensions now and more are being discussed or worked on. So two questions here. How are you going to deal with compatibility and interoperability? Okay, that's around our compliance and, and uh, compatibility and, and some of the testing that uh, we're going to be offering, rolling out. And I think you'll see something in the, in the next uh, six to nine months on that. How all that zoo of configuration is going to be verified on both W and SW front. So uh, those are those configurations, as I mentioned, are around profiles and, and other implementation uh, desired stacks. And that's what you're going to see coming through. And in, in, uh, can we get the slides? Well, I haven't shown any slides, but we have a ton of artifacts. So if you visit our uh, RISC V um, booth at this event, you can certainly uh, get full keynotes, you can get slides, you can get other technical talks uh, that have been online. Uh, we have a full listing of what the uh, of what those technical talks are and, and other aspects that are live in this event. And we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, so if you visit our website, you're going to see you know, documentation, uh, lots of technical documentation, lots of talks, lots of, uh, you know, kind of forums where you can engage. And I encourage everyone to, uh, you know, kind of look at the RISC-V community, see yourself in it, see where you can participate in software, in hardware, in compliance and other tools, uh, design tools, see where it makes sense to engage your uh, personal mission your team's mission, your company mission, or your organization in Risk Five, you'll find an incredible passion in this community, and you know I've I've seen nothing like it. Uh, it is uh, absolutely being hailed as the Linux of hardware. Uh, you know to talk about how fast it's growing and uh, the momentum and energy and investment behind it. Uh, so we continue to see that. We're absolutely excited to share as much information as possible. You can reach out to me directly. And I know that uh, you know we're, we're running a little bit short on time here. It feels like a speed session for us today. Uh, let's see. Has RISC V not caught on in popular areas like phones and wearable devices? We actually have wearables out there. There have been uh, health monitoring uh, types of devices. We have Risk five showing up in headlamps of uh, automobiles. We have, uh, you know, many of the uh, large uh, mobile phone uh, companies looking at Risk five for uh, various implementations, and I think you're going to see that coming out soon. However, understand that a rip and replace of a legacy architecture is a very difficult business case conversation to ha have within your, your company. So we see most of the growth going on in the new workloads and advancing those further. Whether it's cloud providers with massive data centers who are looking at risk five for their future and their growth in those uh, new areas, or it's a phone provider who is looking at risk five for future generations. I think those are uh, most of the questions that we can tackle today. Uh, I'm not sure where we are on time, but I'm sure someone's going to cut me off when it's when it's time to wrap up. Uh, please again, reach out to me directly. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on this platform, uh, and we'd love to uh, continue the discussion with you.